Um, Dr. Furman, the opening question I asked you, you gave a very positive answer saying that you thought that you could, you know, eliminate 95% of heart disease roughly if we um, uh, when followed your protocol, whole food, plant-based diet, exercise, sleep, et cetera. Um, what about your thoughts on how much we could avoid cancer and dementia if we follow your lifestyle, your diet and lifestyle? It depends on when, what point age in life and how advanced it is. In other words, I have a lot of cases of dementia that have reversed themselves, even people who, who I thought that couldn't get better. But of course, as the disease gets more advanced, it becomes more reversible. So it's early stage dementia that's reversible, not late stage. And if we can catch people before they get demented, it's even going to be more protective. You follow me? Um, so diseases become more irreversible or let the prediction value of giving to reverse it is going to be less as the person's disease advances. It's like with cancer too, in the early stages and in the precancerous conditions, it's more reversible in a person has, you know, metastatic cancer that's really advanced. So it's, it's the same thing. And why not just do this program before you get that sick to begin with anyway? You know, that would be the main thing. Um, but I think that um, what I thought that would be um, good to talk about here was the, this, this idea that, you know, we all should be eating to protect ourselves against the common problems that could develop on a plant-based, healthy plant-based diet when we're older, because we want to have our, move, move, our full mental faculties and memory intact in later on in years. And that's where, where eating right and having a favorable omega-3 index, that combine, that combination can enable us to ha not have brain shrinkage with aging. And one thing I've done wrong, which I'm in mourning about, just to tell you an interesting thing, because you know how, um, you know that David Wolf calls himself David Avocado Wolf, remember that? Yes. So yes. I used to joke around, and I just went on the stage in one of his conferences, and I said, I'm Joel Cherimoya Furman, because I love Cherimoyas. You know, I'd come to California eating cherimoyas every day, and I put in 12 cherimoya trees because they're my favorite food. But unfortunately, and I'm in mourning over this, studies came out showing in Caribbean countries where people eat a lot of cherimoyas, they have higher risks of dementia and Parkinson's because of some chemical that's non favorable neurotoxin in the cherimoya, atomoya, soursop, sweet sop, these plants. And I rationalized, well, I don't eat that many of them. But then there was more studies that came out that showed even once a week there were increased risk of some dementia from the toxin, the cherimoya. So just yesterday, I ripped out the, my six cherimoya trees and my six atomoya trees and pulled them out of the ground and putting in new, new you know, putting in persimmons and apricots and different fruit trees. So I, it's, I know it's not of interest to the vast population because they don't eat cherimoyas, but um, I'm just, I'm just being just being conversational and just telling you in, in the morning of not eating cherimoyas anymore. Because the last five years, I've been eating a ton of cherimoyas because they they're so delicious, which Thank can you. actually cause dementia. But the major cause of the, another major cause of dementia that's relatively new in, the, in this nutritional history we're finding out is bivalves and shellfish and crabs and lobster and mussels and oysters and because we're finding that the agricultural runoff causing algae overgrowth, feeding the growth of cyanobacteria, is dumping BMAA into the coastal waterways and lakes. And people who live near lakes and eat lake fish who live near coastal waterways and eat mussels and clams. There have we're seeing clusters of ALS and and, and PDS, Parkinson's dementia syndrome. Um, so I'm also more concerned about that. You know, and there's also things that we have to keep aware of that we didn't know years ago you know, that we didn't know would be a negative thing for the brain. But we know a lot today. And yes, in answer to your question, Steve, that we can, I, I think that the, if we do everything right, dementia, we can protect against that. And that was one of my um, biggest um, concerns with people following plant-based and natural hygiene type diets through my early stage of my career is because all my mentors and people I looked up to and all the, the founding members of the American Natural Hygiene Society, all these healthy plant-based whole food vegans who were older than me and I was a young student, you know, medical student coming up in that field and they were the people I looked up to. Um, so many of them developed Parkinson's disease or dementia um, due to the, not, the lack of knowledge about 
um, DHA being important for brain size with aging. And that's where I re originally developed that concern because Dr. Shelton had Parkinson's and Dr. Sidwa had Parkinson's and, and Dr. Vitrano, who took care of me when I was sick, when I was young, had got dementia and Joy Gross got dementia. And, every, and all these people I knew who were leaders in the plant-based movement developed neurologic disease in later life. And then, of course, now we have, you know, most studies, one study after another, more than 20 studies documenting low levels of omega-3 index linked to shrinkage of the brain with aging. So it's one of the main, my main concerns that to prevent dementia is have the healthy diet, because we know the standard American diet is going to get dementia from different reasons. They're going to get dementia because a person's not eating the, you know, atherosclerotic dementia and lack of phytonutrients. But us super healthy eaters who are going to now live longer you know, want to protect the brain. And I also want to say that maybe if you're a, a healthy eater or a, you know, or a person who's not going to live that long, then maybe that doesn't matter so much. If you're going to die at the average age of most Americans at 75 to 80, maybe paying attention to all these things isn't that critical because you're not going to live long enough to see the brain shrinkage. You know, but if you're going to really want to push the envelope to, you know, past 95, then we got, got to protect our brain so we're, we're alive or at least enjoying our life. So are you recommending that everyone supplement with like an algae-based DHA EPA? No, I don't know if everyone needs to supplement because a lot of people make the make it make enough on their own. You know what I mean? And it's very genetically determined in what they're eating. So some people have to supplement with more, some people have to supplement with a lot more, and some people have to supplement with none. It's the base in their omega-3 index. You know, I know um I know some people whose levels are really excellent when they're not supplementing at all. But I know so many people whose levels are super low and they need even a normal and they need a higher dose of a little bit more. And the other thing that we, you know, we should know is that taking three to four grams of fish oil a day, the high dose of fish oil, that's also not healthy. Like too much of something's bad and too little of being deficient is bad too. You want to be in that sweet spot. You don't want to take a pharmacologic dose of something. You want to take a nutritive dose to make sure you're not deficient. That's the main point here.